Hello, one and all, and welcome to the Damage Preport, in which we're going to be talking about some fairly epic hypocrisy when it comes to immigration law involving Donald Trump, Melania Trump, and Melania's now, uh, tragically, late mother. Uh, but on the path to that, we're going to talk about some other issues, including more on immigration. You know, they want it to be the big news story of the campaign cycle, so... Let's talk about it. Let's talk about what they're saying over on the right, what they're advocating for when it comes to that topic. And actually, later on, on the full show, we will be talking about that as well, because the ads have started to come out from both uh, Donald Trump's campaign as well as Joe Biden's. And uh, not surprisingly, they're tonally a bit different. So we're going to be discussing that coming up in just a little bit. I want to remind everyone that we are in the week of the big uh, monthly members hangout. So uh, I see that many of you are members already for our tier three members every month in the, usually the, the third or last week on a Thursday, we hang out after the show. So we're gonna be doing that half an hour after the close of the aftermath, we're all gonna be hanging out. So feel free to join up with that. If you are just joining us now, and it looks like about half of you have already done so, hitting the like button is a great way to start off the stream experience. Uh, with that said, we're going to jump into um, fact-checking a couple of morons. Uh, I always find that to be fun. Um, it's less fun when you think about how the fact that the people that I'm fact-checking, who are demonstrable morons and have been for literally years, there are no consequences for it, and they continue to pull in huge amounts of money, and for some reason have audiences. I'll never understand how any of this works, but uh, that's what it is. So we're going to talk briefly about uh, Janine Pirro first. So Janine Pirro, uh, as so many of those on Fox News were, uh, spent yesterday talking about the the bond against Donald Trump. Now, of course, the bond was cut in half, an amazing save at the last second by a New York appeals court to stop Donald Trump from having to liquidate uh, some, of his, um, uh, some of his properties. So she believes that even the now much smaller bond should not be acceptable. So $175 million, that's not acceptable. She says on her show, Sam Bakeman freed you know, the guy behind the whole big crypto fraud and all that. His bond was $250 million. Bernie Madoff had 40,000 victims. His bond was $10 million. Donald Trump, no victims, half a billion. So, of course, that's a lie. There were victims. Everybody in New York, theoretically, was a victim of the lost tax revenue from that. Uh, the Daily Show did a great breakdown of that that you should watch. Uh, but regardless... His bond is too big in comparison to Sam Bankman fried and Bernie Madoff. Now, she goes on to criticize those who have commented on this, saying, I don't know where those other people from other stations are learning the law or what they're talking about, but look, there's no harm, no foul, that's the end of it. So there, there was harm, you know, the lost tax revenue. There was foul in that it was illegal. I'm not a lawyer. She theoretically is supposed to be. She doesn't seem to understand this. But in particular, the thing that she's missing here is that she's talking about these bonds, how Bernie Madoff had tons of victims, not as many as Donald Trump did in his tax fraud, um, but uh, his bond was much smaller. And she's like, people who don't understand how this is unjust don't know what the fuck they're talking about when it comes to the law. But here's the problem. She doesn't know what the fuck she's talking about because the word bond means different things in different contexts. Now, very importantly, Sam Bankman fried and Bernie Madoff, do you know what they did? You know what they were being charged under? Criminal law in a criminal proceeding, whereas Donald Trump is in a civil proceeding. It is a civil fraud case. The bond in the two uh, ca cases of civil versus criminal are not the same thing. Their bond was the bond they needed to pay to not be immediately thrown into prison, okay, during the process. That is not what the bond is for Donald Trump. But Donald Trump's civil uh, fraud bond is supposed to be recouping the losses from the fraud that he perpetrated. That is not what is being done in the case of Bernie Madoff um, and Sam Bankman fried And honestly, look, I don't know... If she doesn't know that, if she's just lying about that, if she's so wasted that she can't tell the difference anymore, but you don't even need to be a lawyer to know that. Even Alina Haba probably knows that distinction, but she, a woman who is on TV to provide the unique perspective of a person with a legal background, is completely unaware of that. 
Anyway, let's move on to another person who theoretically should know better. I, I know that you're not going to care about this individual, and you're not going to care about the thing he said, but I think it's ridiculous, so bear with me for ten seconds, and then we'll get on to other matters. M Mark Levin said, we're facing the second Muslim crusade. Now, the context is he's talking about he thinks too many Muslims support terrorism. We're going to return to that in just a sec. But the second Muslim crusade, you know, it's like the first one where the Muslims did a crusade, I guess. What the fuck, man? I love that they can, he can take something that theoretically should be a historic indictment of Christianity, and he just decides, eh, let's pretend the Muslims did that one. Now, the larger issue here is that he says in surveys, too many people who are Muslim, and he's guessing that maybe there's a billion Muslims. There's 1.8 billion Muslims in the world. I don't know why he can't. You can just, like, you can look it up. You have researchers. You're not alone in that room. I'm alone in this room. You're not alone in that room. And I was able to fact check that. But he's saying that too many support uh, political violence. Perhaps that is true. Perhaps that is true. Um, what I would say is, have you seen the polls in America of those who believe that political violence might be acceptable? Have you seen what the MAGA movement thinks about that? Now, of course, he doesn't, do, like, I don't, I think that political debates between pundits is often wasted time, but I don't even think he does those. I would love to see somebody ask him that follow-up. Have you, it's like a, it's like a third to 40% believe that it's acceptable. Um, and we see them at the rallies, screaming for blood. By the way, can I demonstrate it to you? Would you like to see a demonstration of this? Now, this is slightly different, I guess. It's still political violence. Uh, Steve Deese of Blaze TV said, don't you shoot mobs that are trying to invade your country illegally? Isn't that kind of like the standard operating practice is to defend your homeland? So, you know, you look at this guy's face and you think this is a person who is probably just a ticking clock away from, uh, you know, lighting up people with an assault rifle. But in the meantime, he wants other people to do it. So if, you know, a 21-year-old woman with an infant from Guatemala is crossing the border into America, why aren't we shooting her, everyone? Why aren't we killing these people? And this is just, that's what you're just going to get out of the blaze. You're just going to hear that routinely, not just there. Charlie Kirk once again called for shooting and whipping migrants on the southern border. If you enter, we have lethal force and we're willing to use it. They're bringing force upon themselves. You know, these people who are fleeing uh, political persecution, domestic violence, uh, crime in their own countries, economic, you know, aspirations... They're bringing lethal violence on themselves. Why aren't we shooting them? And this is, look, of course they're doing this. You're not tuning into the Blaze or Charlie Kirk because of their, their wit, their understanding of, you know, historic and political nuance. You're not doing any of that stuff. You are tuning in because there are people who you've been gradually radicalized to hate. To hate to an extent that you think the only viable option is for those people to die. You don't know anything about those people. You don't know those people. You don't know anyone like those people. You're not interested in learning about those people. But you do think that a lot of those people would be better off dead. And so you tune into these programs to hear, like, these guys who all look I identical to each other. None of them are particularly talented in terms of uh, political communication. But they do know this. They know their audience. And they know that they're supposed to say that those people should die. And so they say that, and the audience tunes in. They like it, their bloodlust is sated. They are told, I'm good, I'm good, look at my skin, I'm good and definitely better than these other people, so much so that these people should probably die. That's what it is, that's all it is. And by the way, I'm getting reminded that it's probably time for me to cycle the AI images that Brett gave me. So let me move to, what's the next one on this pile of pile of wonders okay we're gonna move to there's a lot of them here dear god i've missed how many there actually are let's go with you know this one's a little bit doony this one's kind of fun i'm gonna go no this this one's just too cool i gotta i gotta go with this one so we're gonna go with this and see what you think about it 
If you're just joining us now, by the way, we're about to hit our main stories, so please hit the like button if you haven't already. Um, my promise to you is that I will not call for anyone's murder on today's program. If you're interested in that sort of content, there are quite a few shows where you can see that. But here's the image. How cool do I look? Anyway, blame Brett. Okay, so we're going to move past that to the fact that, and this is one of my favorite things that, um, that Media Matters does. You'll often see in, uh, especially in the pre-port, that I like to cite the work of Media Matters. I think that they do great work. And one of the things that I like that very few people seem to care about is when they do um, you know, analysis of how much different news outlets are talking about things. Because it's very easy for me to, like, for instance, focus on a thing being said, but how much of this thing is being said? And what's interesting is that as much as they want to talk about the invasion at the border or whatever, what Fox does not want to talk about, according to an analysis by Media Matters, is his mass deportation plan. Oddly enough, they are not talking very much about the fact that he wants to shut down an entire strip along the border. Thank you, D. Brock and uh, set up a network of concentration camps. It turns out that while that's a cool thing for right-wingers to talk about amongst themselves, in terms of like broad communication, I don't know, concentration camps kind of look bad, it invokes a bad time in uh, world history, and so they're not talking about it, oddly enough. Anyway, okay, we're gonna move on to other news in one sec. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Um, I'm just gonna mention this right now, I believe that we'll probably talk about it more on the show tomorrow. So you probably are aware that Truth Social has like moved forward with the big deal that's been brewing since it began. And uh, this Trump-owned media company, it's like being acquired, it's worth like a ton of money. Even though everyone seems to understand that Truth Social is not worth anything. There are very few people on it. It has not grown really at all in the past few years. Um, it is flooded with low-quality ads and bots and horrible memes uh, being put on True Social by people for whom graphic design is very much their passion. Uh, it is basically all about following Donald Trump. He theoretically could go to Twitter any day, in which case there would be literally no reason for even right-wingers to be there. There is no reason for anyone who's not a right-winger to be there. And yet, isn't it interesting that it's worth $3 billion? And, like, that's getting coverage, you know? Like, Axios, Trump's true social stock soars on first day of trading. Uh, why? Is it soaring? Like, you buy a stock, okay, if I'm understanding this right, because you believe that the stock will be worth more later. So you want to buy it when it's low, and then it'll be worth more, and you can sell it. Why would it be worth more in the future? People don't use it. People don't want to use it. Nobody seems to be putting actual money into advertising on it because there's no actual user base. Why would it be worth more money? And look, I'm not I'm not covering this because I'm interested in the stock market or whatever. I think it's fairly clear over time that I'm not super interested in investments or the stock market. However, a very significant amount of money is being transferred to a guy who desperately needs that money for his legal troubles and to campaign on. And he might be president soon. And bear in mind, the $3 billion, none of that has anything to do with campaign finance. It's just money flowing to him. And he can just have it, as much of it as he wants. This is like a much bigger version of him selling, you know, the NFTs, the JPEGs. He gives you an image that costs nothing to generate. You give him $5,000. It's not a donation. It's just money. And like, I'm bringing this up because... Does it not feel like this is kind of a fairly big loophole? If you could transfer billions of dollars to a president and it doesn't bear on campaign finance, like, so why does Joe Biden not just launch Biden News and they go public? He's given billions of dollars by people. Who knows? He's now incredibly wealthy. Like, does anyone else see a bit of a problem with this? But it's barely being talked about. The, the, the true social stock being sold is being talked about. The fact that this appears to be a massive loophole in campaign finance law does not. In any event, thank you to the many of you who are here. Uh, hit the like button because we're launching into our main story. So I want to talk about, look, so this story is about Melania Trump, Melania Trump's uh, mother, uh, Amal Amaliha Nobbs, okay? 
Now, she has since passed. This is not a story that is critical of Melania's mother. I want to be very clear about that. It's also not a story that's critical of Melania Trump. She did nothing wrong in this, as is generally the case. So Melania Trump, it had widely been suspected for a long time, was able to get her mother into the United States under an area of immigration law that is colloquially uh, uh, called chain migration. The idea is that if you come in, you abide by all the laws or whatever, you become a citizen, then you can sponsor the citizenship of other sorts of people and they get expedited access to the United States. It had been suspected, as I said, that that is what was used to get her mother into the United States. That has now been confirmed as of just a few days ago that that is what was actually done. Okay, she was able to come in by sponsoring, by being sponsored by Melania Trump. In the paperwork, Melania Trump is listed as her actual uh, economic, uh, financial sponsor is, is the term that is used. Okay, nothing about that is wrong. That is a system that many people have used. It's law. It's not something shady or unethical. So why am I talking about it? Well, here's why I'm talking about it. Because Donald Trump has repeatedly, not just as a candidate, uh, as president, demonized and talked about ending this process, specifically chain migration. You go on his Twitter, it is all over the place. He doesn't talk about it that much anymore, which I think is very interesting, and we can speculate about why that might be. But he very much talked about it for a long time. Now, she has since passed. It doesn't bear on her. It doesn't have anything to do with her or whatever. Um, but he uh, endorsed a bill called the RAISE Act that would have limited priority sponsorship, so the sort of sponsorship that you could do under this, to spouses and minor children. So you would not be able to sponsor your parents. You would not be able to sponsor your adult children to come in. So in particular, if he had gotten his way, the law would have been set up in a way that this wouldn't have been possible. And look, so there's massive hypocrisy there on the right, that this was good enough for his mother-in-law, but it's not good enough for your mother-in-law if you're an immigrant. It's not good enough for, you know, the adult children to be brought in. Now, Melania didn't do that, but she could have, hypothetically. And again, it's that thing of, that we always see. They walk through the door, and then they slam it shut behind them. And there's the added layer uh, that I think of, like, palace intrigue here in that, like, so for years, when he's demonizing this process, this process that I have to imagine was a very involved and complicated bureaucratic and financial mess to get done. Even though it's the expedited version, it was probably a lot of work for Melania Trump and her lawyers to do it. And then she sees her husband in rally speeches, State of the Union, in tweets, demonizing that process saying it's horrible chain migration and ridiculous lottery system. We must protect our country at all cost. It's not just horrible, it is a threat to the United States. And I just often wonder, what were those conversations like? I don't know. I know people are making jokes about mothers-in-law or whatever, but like, has anyone ever demonstrated that people being sponsored through chain migration have ever harmed the United States in any way? Has it ever been a negative for us that this was done? Were we weakened as a country because Melania Trump's aged mother came here? I don't think so. I don't think so. But there is nothing, no, no matter how benign, that it will not be used to demonize against those who are just trying to join their family, get a job, contribute. Anyway, we'll see. I'm, I mean, look, they've got bigger stuff to talk about, I guess. They're probably having some conversations about Stormy Daniels right now. But I would add this to the list, especially with this revelation coming out in any way. Uh, in any event, I should say, uh, I do have to run. We got the show coming up in five minutes. It is a solo show. I've already burned through 30% of my voice, so we're going to see how that works. But thank you everyone for being here. Hit the like button on the way out if you haven't already, and I will see you soon.